Chris Collinsworth, the former three-time Pro Bowl wide receiver. Is that right, Chris? Three-time Pro Bowl wide receiver with the Bengals? And that, uh, that's right. Uh, and two-time alternate. Two-time alternate. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and throw that in there. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Uh, career <laughs> rushing yards for Chris Collinsworth, Paulie? Uh, I have seven carries for negative 15 yards. That's solid. That's solid. <laughs> You're going the wrong now, direction. Now, if you check, check my passing records. They're not so good either. I, I got to throw two passes, but one of them hit my roommate, Steve Kreider, right in the hands yeah. in the end zone. Mm -hmm. It should have been the game-winning touchdown. So instead of 0 for 2 with a zero quarterback rating, I should have been 1 for 2, one touchdown, and it was a bomb. It was a big shot. Did you have an interception in your career? Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> but it was on national television, so I got a lot of attention for it. So you were one of the two-way stars. When we talk about the great two-way stars, you, you – oh, no, you threw one. My bad, Chris. I'm sorry. So you, you threw an interception. I thought you may have gotten an interception. No. I'm sorry no. about that. Yeah. We covered a couple of onside kicks, you know, some solid <laughs> stuff like that. So. <laughs> Uh, Chris has got the game on Saturday night. It's uh, the Vikings and the Packers as uh, Brett Hundley is going to get the uh, start. Uh, did you see any scenario where the, that uh, Rodgers would have played in this game the, after they were eliminated? But was there any reason why you would have Rodgers play in this game? I don't think so. Uh, you know, when <laughs> we were talking about it before, we were all saying, boy, I hope he doesn't get hurt in the Carolina game so he's going to play. But the more you thought about it, the more you knew that – if they weren't in contention, which they weren't by the end of it, like why in the world would you put them out there? <laughs> you know, it just the whole thing seems a little crazy to begin with. And and you know, Hundley did okay. He he played yeah. a good game against Pittsburgh, and you know, he really gave him a chance to win that football game. But uh, against this defense, and this is the defense that got him hurt to begin with, Aaron Rodgers. So you know, I don't know why you would do it. The the Patriots don't uh, invite controversy. They don't create it. I mean, there is controversy. There's criticism. But now they've created something, or have they, with Tom Brady's uh, physical guru, health guru here, where they've banned him from the sidelines and team planes. At this point in the season, Chris, how surprising are you that this is a story, and I don't know how big a story, but it's a big story enough for, uh, you know, nationally. Well, I mean, it, it is a little bit of a story because so much of Brady's, I don't know, future maybe relies on this TB12 and, and, you know, he really, he believes that, you know, he really believes that what he's doing as far as lifting weights and training uh, is the reason that he's able to have such a long career, uh, the reason he's been so successful. Um, and if nothing else, from a pure marketing standpoint, it's not great for TB12, right? Um, so I understand why it's a, a little bit of a story, but I also understand the way those teams work and, and team doctors in general have the final say over everything that goes on. Uh, and if there was ever conflict between the team doctors and whatever uh, Tom's guy felt, and maybe that was creating a bit of a stir in the locker room. I, I don't know. I'm just I'm just guessing and speculating here. But um, yeah, I'm, I, I would imagine it's a little uncomfortable. Yeah, just the timing of it is is strange. That you know now it comes out, and why with two games left, and here you are the favorites to repeat as Super Bowl champ. So, and you know just with Belichick not wanting to acknowledge it, Brady doesn't want to acknowledge it. But you know it's sort of simmering there somewhere in the uh, at Gillette Stadium. Yeah, well, they're not really good at, at openly discussing uh, any issues in New England, so it leads to a lot of speculation. And, and I, I have a feeling that the answer is going to be, you know, nothing's going to get in the way of us winning another Super Bowl together. And, you know, sometimes there may be hard feelings or disagreements or whatever, but... I think that's been the singular most impressive part of what's happened in New England, that 
they can kind of plow through any of these these side items and, and find a way to play their best football. But they are good at compartmentalizing. I think the Steelers have let this linger with how that game ended and, you know, the, there's finger pointing and who called the spike and non-spike. Antonio Brown is hurt. Uh, you know, the drop pass. It, it, like, the, the, the Patriots move on. The Steelers, why are they holding on to this and still answering questions on this instead of just saying, look, we're on to our next game. You know what? We, we, we're not looking back. Well, it's, it's one of the issues, I think, when you hold press conferences throughout the course of the week. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. when you get, you get Roethlisberger's reaction to it right after the game, you're going to get the head coach's reaction to it in another press area right after the game. Uh, you're going to get the offensive coordinator, Todd Haley's reaction to it on Wednesday after he's probably been beat up in the press for not doing whatever it was that, you know, the other guys have talked about or the other rumors have been. Uh, but honestly, if you've been around that Pittsburgh organization, I mean, there is a little bit of that sort of tension anyway there. There's a little bit of um, – you know, who's calling the plays? Certain people are calling the plays in the no huddle. Is it coming from Haley? Is it coming from, you know, there's always philosophical differences on how the game, should it be more of Le'Veon Bell? Should it be more of no huddle? Should it be more of Ben Roethlisberger? Should it be more of Antonio Brown? I mean, there are a lot of stars that have to get fed in, in Pittsburgh. And so I think it's, it, you know, I, I do think there are disagreements on how, Play calling and play selection and play operation uh, come down the road there, but obviously their success has been the overriding factor. And um, you know there are a lot of there are a lot of egos uh, in play, not just in Pittsburgh, but in New England and around the National Football League. And that's what makes you know the great head coaches great head coaches. I mean, the ability of Bill Belichick and Mike Tomlin <clears throat> to control some of those discussions. And to keep them in house, and when they do percolate over, put the lid back on the pot. You know that's a big part of being a head coach, and it's why those two organizations have worked so well with those two head coaches. He's Chris Collinsworth. He's got the Vikings Packers Saturday night on NBC. The Sunday night football this weekend on Saturday night. Uh, how invested would you be with the Rams moving into the postseason? I, I don't know what's not to like about the Rams. Um, They've got a star running back. They have quality receivers. They have a very good offensive line. They have people that can rush the passer. They have Aaron Donald, who's playing as well as anybody in football uh, right now. So, you know, I mean, this is, this is, this is a good football team. The, the biggest problem they have is they haven't been on national television very much. So I don't think very many people – know that much about it. I remember we did a Thursday night game out there early in the season against San Francisco and we were all and boy it was a great game came right down to the wire the Rams pulled it out and we were leaving the stadium thinking boy this is a cute game between two bad teams <laughs> but at least it was close so maybe it worked out you know yeah. and then yeah. Yeah, the other one that I like is this guy Lance Kendricks who's playing for uh, the Green Bay Packers now, who was a tight end on the Rams for, what, five years, something like that. And he left in part because he wanted to have a chance to go to the playoffs. So he comes to Green Bay, they're out of the playoffs, and the Rams are in the playoffs. So it just goes to show with this league, who knows. Uh, you having played the position of wide receiver, was there ever a, um, a point in your pro career where you wondered what a catch was or wasn't? Never. Never. I, I I know where you're going with this one, and I have a feeling we're going to be talking about this on the pregame show uh, this weekend, but I, 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 I don't like where it's headed at all. I, I think that in the same way a runner, um, if he has control of the football and, and breaks the plane of the goal line, yeah. that's a touchdown. I don't understand why a receiver who has control of the football – albeit going to the ground as part of the process of the catch or whatever the heck you want to say. But the whole reason why that rule was put in place was that they didn't want to create unnecessary fumbles. In other words, they, they would rather have an incomplete pass than something ruled a turnover 
because the guy didn't control the football. Uh, in my estimation, the goal line and the out of bounds lines are two distinct areas of the football field. So if you have control of the football and you have two feet that have touched and you break the plane of the goal line or you go out of bounds, I don't really care what happens when you hit the ground out of bounds or in the end zone. Yeah. Because if it's a touchdown on a run, it should be a touchdown on a pass. And if it's out of bounds, then it doesn't matter. You're not fumbling the ball if you're out of bounds. So I think that in this, this era, in this league, where everything is created to help improve offensive football. I mean, let's face it, it is. What the holding is now unbelievable what's allowed in holding. It used to be, if you remember, like the old electric football stuff, the guys had to have their hands together at their chest and their wings <laughs> out to try and block somebody. <laughs> then you could stick your hands in their chest. Now, I swear to you, you can wrap your arms around the outside of anybody who rushes the passer, and that's not a foul. So if we've evolved to try and open up the offense with offensive holding like that, why the heck are we taking touchdowns and game-winning plays off the board over this rule that I still don't know how I got created about taking the ball all the way to the ground? I, I've never liked it. I think it makes it too hard to officiate. I think it brings slow-motion, instant replay way too much into effect. If a guy has control of the ball and goes out of bounds or breaks the plane of the goal line, that should be it. I'll leave you with this. Uh, Derek Carr said he would have made the same play that he did when he fumbled the ball out of the end zone against uh, the Dallas Cowboys. Is there a way, because I, you're making an athletic move, and can I, can I have the ball at the one, or if you fumble it through the end zone while trying to make, I mean, we love these pylon moments where you're trying to score a touchdown and trying to get it over the pylon. What if we brought it back to the 20-yard line and the offensive team was still able to have possession of the ball? Why should you lose the ball if it goes through the end zone? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go on the other side of that one. I, I think that is... I think that is control of the football in the field of play. Uh, and if you lose control of the football in the field of play, you're responsible for it. Now, the interesting part of that is that if you fumble the ball forward and out of bounds, uh, you don't get the benefit of that in the last two minutes. The ball would come back to the spot, right? So, you know, there's an argument, and there was a little debate even within our truck that night as to whether or not how is that going to get ruled. Does it come back to the spot? Or is it, is it a touchback? Um, but I think that controlling the football in the field of play is something you're responsible for. And there are a lot of teams that coach it to where you are not on, you're not allowed to reach that ball out for the end zone and that pylon play because the price that you pay for possibly losing it is just simply too great. You're a buzzkill, man. I know. I killed that one. I, I helped the other one, though. I helped the other one. I <laughs> yeah. spot on the other one. I can help you a little. All right, all right. Give uh, a little, give a lot. Okay, all right, all right. We'll save it for Saturday night. Uh, thank you, Chris. We appreciate your time, as always. All right, buddy. Happy holidays. Thanks. You too. That's Chris Collinsworth. Sunday Night Football and Saturday Night Vikings and the Packers. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.